Okay, so welcome everyone. And, uh, this is our session in the Opportunity Sphere, and we are now here with Lavinia Alana and Rado talking about the European Court of Auditors. So the floor is yours. You can present yourselves and then um, talk about the opportunities that you're offering. Go on, Lavinia. My name is Lavinia Wana and uh, I am coming from Romania. I have joined the European institutions in 2009 uh, thanks to a newspaper ad in the financial newspaper in Bucharest. I was working in Bucharest back then, so I had a stable job, everything was fine. But then I said, why not? And I just did it as a sideline and um, it was a great experience. I applied for the AST1 competition, which was only for the Romanians and the Bulgarians back then. And I succeeded and I was offered only jobs in uh, Luxembourg, which was uh, back then a bit of a hiccup for me. But once I got to Luxembourg and it was in October, the city was great and uh, when I got to the European headquarters and I felt like, wow, this is where I would like to, to be working. So um, I have been working for the European Court of Auditors. It was my first job and I stayed here it's been now 12 years and uh, almost 13 actually. And I have started in human resources and uh, as an assistant and uh, I worked um, for the missions office when I worked for the welcome desk and in 2019 I passed an internal competition and I became AD and since 2020 I am an administrator still in the human resources because I really like working with people and I'm in charge of uh, different projects that we are doing for um, human resources and IT applications that are used in human resources. Radu. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Radu Constantinescu. I'm um, an official of the European institution for uh, 14 years now. Uh, also after a NEPSO competition for, for uh, administrators. Um, I'm at my third institution uh, because when I joined the EU, I was affected to the European Parliament and then I moved to the European Court of Justice and now I'm in the European Court of Auditors. Uh, and in all three institutions, I, I've done uh, a lot of things in different areas uh, from human resources to uh, legal um, affairs, to procurement and uh, to logistics and infrastructure, and now back in the human resources again. So um, uh, I work in, in, in a broad uh, range of, of uh, professional areas. Um, I'm in the court of auditors uh, for three years. Soon, uh, 1st of April, I will, I will uh, have my third anniversary here at the court. Um, and in Luxembourg, I'm also from, uh, the, I have the same, the same uh, uh, age, uh, as we say, the, in my country, I have my identity card now because it's also 14 years since I am in Luxembourg in, in these institutions. Um, that's it for the personal uh, presentation. I will now go to, uh, present uh, the European Court of Auditors for you um, a little bit in, in, a, in a broader perspective and with some details that you can't really find in the, um, how to say, in, in the general publications about the court. So um, from a historical point of view, we started uh, in back in 1975 and uh, the court was established as the European Union External Auditor Sorry. Uh, the court is one of the EU seven institutions established by the treaties uh, and it is based in Luxembourg and Luxembourg only. Currently, it employs around 900 uh, uh, people, um, more than half of them being uh, auditors. 
and the other uh, being in support or administrative uh, services. And of course, we are uh, all from all over uh, the European uh, Union. So we have all the uh, EU nationalities represented. Um, the court operates in a collegiate body. Uh, it means that each member state has one representative as a member of the European uh, Court of Auditors. And the auditors, they check uh, that the EU uh, keeps good accounts and correctly applies the financial rules um, and that uh, the overall policies of the European Union and the programs uh, achieve the intended objectives and deliver value for money. Um, now, through the general work, uh, we strive to make a difference um, by helping the EU to make a better use for, uh, for its money and we contribute to improving the EU financial management as well, promote accountability of the EU bodies and the transparency in uh, the audit work that we do. Uh, the main role is that we warn about risk, we provide assurance because we have an annual uh, declaration for, for insurance, uh, for assurance, sorry. We indicate the shortcomings, we discover many things uh, that are not regular or even uh, they are illegal. And um, we indicate also the successes uh, achieved by the implementation of the projects uh, financed by, by EU money. And we offer guidance to EU policymakers and legislators. Um, all the court observations are presented in a report or special reports. And we also issue recommendations to the European Parliament to the European Union Council and to EU Council and uh, to the national governments and parliament upon request or by um, default, I would say, as well as to the general public. Um, now, as from an administrative, purely administrative uh, perspective, we are divided into 10 audit and administrative directorates, and we are functioning with a very flexible task-based Things. So we are a task-based organization. We don't have uh, now any more um, um, hierarchical structure or, or a very, um, or how to say, um, formalized structure. We are no longer organized into uh, services, units, directorates, etc. Um, because the audit directorates, as we call them, they are they follow um, the organization into five chambers, uh, for example, audit chambers, which uh, deal every one of them with different policy areas and to which staff are assigned according to the priorities uh, stemming from the work program, or the annual work program of the, of the court. Uh, first, chamber one is uh, dealing with the sustainable use of natural resources. Chamber two uh, is dealing with the investment for cohesion, growth, and uh, inclusion. Uh, chamber three is external action, security, and justice. Chamber four is the, dealing with the regulation of markets and competitive economy. Chamber five is dealing with the financing and administri uh, administering of the European Union in general, including the European Union institutions. Um, what we uh, try to, to uh, put an accent on is the knowledge management and the development, uh, developing uh, to develop appropriate expertise throughout the house uh, because they are key to, to the audit work mainly. Um, so this also involves uh, a lot of traveling to the EU and to the third countries worldwide, uh, everywhere where EU money is spent, we send our auditors to um, assess the, the regular implementation of these programs. Um, now, uh, two, three words about what we are trying to offer to, to uh, the newcomers or to the ones interested in joining the court. Well, we, first of all, we offer, we believe to offer a very stimulating learning environment that provides both professional development opportunities and also a continuous professional um, uh, 
stimulation of what I like to, to, to call uh, the intellectual curiosity of our auditors. Uh, so being in addition of being a modern and dynamic organization, um, which strives for uh, promoting excellence, professionalism, transparency and integrity, we define ourselves as well as a diverse, um, maybe flexible and yeah, equitable institution, which offers every individual um, the opportunity to maximize their talent. Um, we are a learning-based organization and we rely on the institutional knowledge and the motivated and well-trained staff to serve the EU and its uh, citizens. So um, the auditors, they receive support, uh, continuous support for acquiring and maintaining their professional qualifications, uh, participating in postgraduate programs, uh, acquiring new uh, audit qualification international or wide world or recognized like the ACCA, for example, ACCA. Um, attending, they attend internal and external professional uh, training programs, um, conferences, uh, we recognize and we reward the performance um, through empowerment, uh, performance and knowledge management awards, leadership development programs and other learning uh, and development opportunities. And we like to think of ourselves because we are the smallest institutions between the seven that we also are an institution of a human scale because we've try to facilitate integration, inclusion. Um, this allows also an easier interaction and encourages teamwork a lot. So um, now we offer flexible working hours and, and teleworking as well, uh, also from outside the place of residence. And our premises are of course equipped with everything uh, that is needed to perform well in, in one's work tasks. Um, all the facilities um, like a canteen, a cafeteria, sport room, gym, dry cleaner, uh, meditation room even. Um, so part of them are now closed still because of the COVID pandemic, but uh, shortly if the evolution of the situation is, is a favorable one, they will be reopened to, to staff. Um, what we value a lot is the inclusion and the equal opportunities for staff and, and uh, we strive to ensure a respectful working environment, which is based, on, based also on, on open communication, dialogue, mutual trust, confidence, staff engagement. Um, the well-being is also, uh, uh, and the green policy, uh, the, are also very important pillars for, for the internal policies of the court. So this is in short, what I can say about the, the European Court of Auditors. Um, now, if you have any specific questions about the internal organization, about the different entities within the court or uh, the opportunities to get uh, a job uh, at the court, uh, we are at your disposition. Yes, I believe everyone would be interested in the internship, but also job opportunities. Or maybe you can also tell us about the competition that you uh, entered the court um, through. You're muted. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it was just to check your attention. But no, we, we don't organize competitions uh, properly speaking because we don't have this competence. The, this competence belongs only to EPSO. What we can do and we do is to organize and to publish from time to time uh, calls for expression of interest in order to recruit um, contractual staff, meaning that the, the recruited, the selected candidates will be offered contracts uh, for a determined period of time, which may vary from one year to maximum uh, six years, uh, in different uh, positions and with different gradings. Uh, but 
these uh, are really detailed elements, the grading, the positions, etc. So what I can suggest to the participants, maybe if they have specific questions, uh, we will try to reply them now. But also I, I advise them to go on EPSO site and see uh, a detailed explanation there on what does it mean to be an administrator, what does it mean to be an assistant, uh, which are the function groups in which you may one might may be recruited, uh, the grades also for uh, for the uh, contractual stuff and the function groups because there again there is a difference between temporary agents and contract staff agents etc. So these are detailed elements, but to come back with, to what we do, uh, we launched this, this call for expression of interest, which are published also in the official journal of the European Union and open to uh, any citizen of the European Union, basically, uh, who uh, meet the, the uh, requirements uh, of, of the published uh, positions. If I may. I think that the best way to to get the feeling of uh, the European institutions is uh, by applying for an internship and we are offering three internships per year, uh, one in March, one in May and one in October for five months, uh, from three to five months. And um, I have just posted the sites that uh, where you can find more in, more uh, information on uh, on the chat. So most of the trainees that uh, come to the institutions, they really love it and they make a name for themselves by working hard, of course, during this uh, traineeship. And um, most of them apply for an EPSO competition. They either apply for a CAST or they uh, simply find a job within the European institution. So that is really an entry gate and the way to get a feeling of what it means to work in the European institution. So don't hesitate to apply for an EPSO competition like we did, but also if you simply want to get the feeling and you have never worked before, or if you are just at the beginning of your career, try uh, an internship in any of the institutions uh, and um, I'm sure that you will find it interesting and then you will stay with us. Uh, to, 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 to complement what Wanga said is that uh, for the traineeships, the, the, they are really real traineeships. Uh, it means that people uh, admitted to, to have a traineeship in the court, they will really work. It's not to make photocopies or to prepare coffee or uh, other uh, urban legends that are circulating about EU institutions and the, the traineeships. No, they, if they are... Um, um, how to say they, they are awarded because it's an award also for the for the chambers for the audit chambers or the and the, the entities within. Uh, if they will do audit, they will be really involved in the audit tasks and they will have to work on the on the audit and prepare documents and analyze and assess and uh, do a real real job. So for five months, it will be very intensive and it will be very um, uh, I would say very uh, rewarding for the future professional development of the person. Um, and also it's the same for the, for the administrative and support services uh, as well. So we, we don't take traineeships just to brag ourselves with the fact that we had the uh, trainees uh, for a certain period, but we, we take them because we need the, their skills and competencies and also because we have work for them. That sounds great, but uh, going more into depth uh, about um, this internship, what are the tasks or the different requirements? Because auditing may sound a bit, um, I don't know, difficult or uh, not so close to, let's say, people studying international relations. Well, the people studying international relations, maybe they should go and apply for an internship uh, in the European Commission or uh, I don't know, European Council or a, a European Parliament, for, for example, uh, as I said in the presentation, we, the, the core business of our institution is doing audits. And therefore, we need mainly staff 
uh, accept the support and administrative services like the one we are working for, uh, me and Juana, uh, um, with competencies related to audit tasks. So, but if you are, for example, graduating uh, economy or mathematics or statistics, or um, you have a PhD in automated uh, computing or uh, data mining or something like this, we for definitely we will try to, to have you on board because these are areas or, or fields that are very much related to the modern audit that we try to, to do in these days. And uh, yet, yet again, in three to five months, of course, you will not become a, a real auditor, but you will be really involved in the audit uh, on course audits, and you will perform tasks uh, tasks related to your professional expertise and qualifications, but also related to the ongoing audit in which you are involved. Uh, so your competencies will be put uh, at use and at good use, I, I dare to say, um, by the audit uh, team doing the, the or, or um, uh, dealing with the ongoing task in that respective audit. So one doing data mining, for example, will do exactly that. During five months, will mine data for the audit. What I would like to add is that we are also looking for trainees, for example, for translations, for the translations unit and um, there is uh, also a big opportunity for um, those who are, might be afraid that uh, they don't speak very well the two languages required uh, by the institutions is that during the working time you can also develop your language skills we are offering languages um, courses and so if one of you is interested in working for the European institutions and that fears that he or she doesn't have the third language that will not be a big problem because you can develop those skills following language courses. So um, yeah, for the traineeship, coming back to the traineeships, we mostly need them in audit fields, but um, we also have uh, trainees in the legal department, we have trainees in the communication uh, department, we have um, in human resources. So if you really want to, to get the feeling, then you can apply and uh, you, you will get a, a response if, you are, if your profile uh, is uh, appropriate for our institution. But like Radu said, just apply for any traineeship in any of the European institutions. You, are, you have the right to have one traineeship, uh, right Radu? One traineeship, yeah. Um, for, for the European Court of Auditors, we don't accept trainees that already had another traineeship elsewhere in another EU institution. So we are exclusive from this perspective. Okay, are there any questions from our audience? Let's see, uh, you can write in the chat or uh, raise your hand. One of the big advantages of the European Court of Auditors is by May, until somebody gets the courage to ask a question, we are not biting, so feel free to, to put on the mic or just write it in the chat if you're shy, it's not a problem. Uh, why I didn't leave the European uh, Court of Auditors, it's uh, given the fact that we are the, one of the smallest institutions, the smallest actually, is that we are like a family. So we know each other uh, by working in the... Uh, Radu, you are sharing your screen. Um, we, we, being only 1,000 people, then we are just like a family, like I was saying. So um, we... We in human resources tend to know most of the people, but we are just greeting each other like in a small village on the corridors and getting team buildings or doing trainings together. So the biggest advantage of uh, working in the European Court of Auditors is that uh, you feel like you are belonging to a family. And of course, the, if you are working hard, then you have um, higher chances of getting uh, 
faster career as well. I don't know if you wanted to show us the website or yeah, we don't hear you and we don't see your screen. Oh, um, I'm trying to share with you the job opportunities page in our website, which is in Spanish as well. I don't know if you see it or not. Yes, we do. I am. You can? I can't. You can't. You because it, you know? to me it says you are screen sharing. Yes, I can see it. Um, I hope the rest can hear it. Ah, yeah. 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 So this is this is what we are currently advertising as open positions now, and you may see there it's already it's still ongoing until the 25th of March. And this is the call for expression of interest, for example, for auditors. Uh, who will be involved in auditing the uh, next generation EU programs. So um, anyone interested, just click on the link and you will see that you have it in all the official languages of the European Union and it's, it's there basically with all the conditions and what the tasks uh, are. We don't see what the problem. You don't, you don't see or? It's black screen. I don't know yeah. why. Maybe you shared only that tab and it doesn't allow you to show the pop up. I'll try to do it like this. Can you see it now? Yes, we see the, the main tab, but if yeah. you click on the position. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work like this. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, if you still see the, 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 uh, the job opportunities page, then just anyone interested, just click on that and you will see, for example. And then you also have the questions about the recruitment process, the questions about technical problems if they arise, etc. And then uh, also uh, in Spanish, what does it mean to work for the European Court of Auditors? Uh, a very interesting program that we have for auditors, which is called Aspire program, which is uh, an immersive um uh, program uh, for uh, um, people who didn't do audit uh, in their previous uh, professional uh, experiences but have the skills and the competencies uh, and um, to and knowledge even to to do audit and they will follow an intensive uh, training um which lasts for three years, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, will we'll, um, then move also within uh, different, uh, different chambers of audit uh, within the house and between also financial and performance audit. So they will learn basically everything about audit and then they will start doing uh, performing audits as, as auditors of the European Court. Um, so, we, we think that we offer a, a broad range of opportunities, for both for developing uh, the professional skills, competences, knowledge already acquired and acquiring uh, new ones as well. It's really interesting. Now, a more practical question. What about the life in Luxembourg? <laughs> you said you were not really convinced in the beginning and uh, I think it's well known that it's quite expensive. So can you give us this more daily life picture? Yeah, of course. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, there is definitely a difference between Brussels and Luxembourg for the prices of the real estate. That's for sure. But uh, I never had the issue even if I started as a AST1, which was a uh, not the highest salary that one can get, but um, if you are a single person in Luxembourg, then you can rent a studio, or if you are a young, very young person who wants to have a social life, then you can even share a flat together, and then you can go partying together. So that's, that is not a problem in the end if you want to, to come to Luxembourg and for the Safety, I think that Luxembourg is far safer than Brussels. 
the criminality rate here is very low compared to Brussels or to the other European uh, countries. Uh, the, um, the environment is very clean, to say so. We have a lot of forest, we have a lot of possibilities to do activities in nature. There are uh, biking, uh, biking slopes, I don't know how you call them, everywhere here. You can, um, you can, there is social life as well in Luxembourg city. So there are lots of bars, there are lots of restaurants with very different um, uh, cuisines, kitchen. And what I really like about Luxembourg compared to the other capitals is that you don't feel like a foreigner here. The Luxembourgish are very welcoming. They all speak at least three languages, English, French, and German. So whenever you go somewhere in a shop or in a restaurant, if you speak one of the three languages, you will never have an issue. And uh, for the administrative part, they are also very open and uh, you, they really help you integrate. And I never felt like a foreigner. That's, that, that is the biggest advantage, I think, of Luxembourg. Uh, Radu, if you think of something. Yeah, well, just to complement what you said, I, I totally agree. You, <laughs> you cannot feel as a foreigner because the Luxembourgish, that the real Luxembourgish, they are endangered, uh, endangered species now. So <laughs> we are more than 60% uh, uh, foreigners or having a foreign origin, even if they some acquired the uh, Luxembourgish nationality. Um, and, and from the administrative point of view, all the all administrations, be it uh, from uh, the commune, I mean the, the, the small village uh, uh, mayor's office, to the Luxembourg city, uh, so to the capital administration, uh, not only they work fast, but they the, the bureaucratic procedures they are really reduced to a strict minimum, and uh, you get everything basically. Uh, the, everything basically is digitalized and you get it in on the spot or maximum in one or two days so you all, all requests are, are online and then you get the documents if they are necessary in a paper format you get them by post in your in your post or box um, all the other aspects mentioned by Lavinia by Wana as I call her um, are, are clearly true. Uh, I would like to emphasize just one thing that um, currently there is a big project ongoing, uh, which is managed by the European Commission at a very high level and uh, supervised by the Commissioner Han. Uh, and this project uh, deals with the uh, increase of the Luxembourg attractiveness for uh, newcomers. Uh, it's a project oriented uh, on 12 major uh, sub project or um, uh, directions. And it goes from uh, um, allowing or awarding a housing allowance for, for low grades or low incomes, if you want, uh, to uh, favoring uh, the spouse's uh, employment and finding uh, accommodation in the beginning period for the newcomers, etc. So once it will be uh, really defined and uh, start to be implemented, um, it will give new opportunities and chances, if you want to accept the term, for the newcomers. Uh, for, the, for the prices, yes, there is a difference with Brussels, but not for the uh, day-to-day -day life, uh, meaning food, uh, gas, uh, uh, energy, etc. Uh, even the prices are lower in Luxembourg compared to Brussels for this uh, for this uh, element. Housing is expensive in Luxembourg indeed, uh, but the difference Luxembourg to Brussels is rapidly diminishing, I, I have to say as well. But it's still uh, an important difference yeah, for the housing. L Luxembourg being a small country uh, with a lot of people coming every day, basically. Uh, housing could be an issue, but it's not an unresolvable issue or uh, uh, something that could endanger your, your 
your life here. Let's see if there are any questions. If there are no questions or there are questions later, maybe they can just uh, contact the show. Okay. Question? Yeah. Sophia, is there any question? What, what do you mean by compliance officers? Well, we, we as as auditors, we also do compliance audits. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, when when you audit, you verify also the compliance uh, with the existing regulations and the financial regulations applied by the European Union. So yes, but there is no position as such, not a position called compliance officer, for example, as you may have in banks or. Or other organisms. As I said, if there are no questions, you can just contact them through the official email. And um, we will make this uh, recording available later. So maybe other people will also be interested. And um, I don't know if you want to say some final words. Or... Just to thank you for your attention. And um, uh, I encourage you to, to apply and to express yourself, of, for, uh, self, uh, of course, for uh, any, any position that you might find attractive. Um, here at the court. Yeah, same, same like that. I would like to thank you and don't hesitate because even if you are simply following an EPSO competition or any interviews or any appliance application that you are doing will simply enrich your professional experience. So nothing to lose. Go ahead and good luck. Yeah, exactly. If you don't apply, you will not get it for sure. And 100% chances. If you apply, you just move onwards, you know, upwards uh, <laughs> with the chances to be recruited. So start applying first. Have a nice day, everybody. That was a, a great ending. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, people will apply. And thank you so much for coming and for sharing your experience with us. You're welcome. Pleasure. Have a nice day too. Bye bye. Bye.